What horror movie do you think you would easily survive if you were in it? The Strangers. The characters pissed me off the whole time. First of all, don't split up. Also, turn on the FING lights. Then grab the guns, camp out in the middle of the house, and wait for the killers to either leave or come for you, then blow their brains out. Let me just leave the gun on the floor in the bedroom. I'm sure it's fine. Seriously the dumbest movie. This is the one where they barricade themselves in the bedroom with a shotgun then abandon that plan when they accidentally kill their friend? Yeah, that's called proof of concept. Your dead friend isn't coming back. So sit tight you idiots. P.S. The final line in that movie might be the creepiest line ever. It will be easier next time, I scrolled way down waiting to see this one. I've seen that movie too many times and every time it fills me with rage. From the beginning it's just entirely unrealistic. Somebody knocking on my door at 4 a.m.? I'm calling the law. I'm a smoker too, I never run out of smokes randomly, I buy them at the same time every two days. Even if I did, I wouldn't stay in that house alone where some girl had already been acting weird knocking on the door. Even if I somehow was stupid enough to fall into this dumbass trap, nothing about the rest of it would have remained the same. She didn't even try to fight at any point, the house was full of objects that could have been used as weapons and she just floundered around and let herself get captured, don't be afraid of the dark. Those things are 6 inches tall. All you need is a golf club or hockey stick, and one of those LED headlamps that last 1000 hours, this movie scared the living shit out of me. The old man giving up his teeth, and his maid's teeth, as an offering to get his kid back. Foodie. Me. Up. I would be fine sleeping with the lights on but I would totally fall for their trap if they took my kid. Don't be afraid of the dark is one of the few horror films to bother me. I hate my friend for recommending it. Every time I see my cat dash in the hallway at night. Underrated movie BTW. That movie was good if you turned your brains off, like you should for most horror movies really, those creatures were inconsistent enough strength to break those damn legs, but get killed by a little kid minutes later, and resealing the dash pit makes no sense. People now know there are hostile intelligent non-human creatures in a confined area dot 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 either some shady agency would swoop in to research them, or you could just throw a couple of grenades down the hole and be done with it. Resealing it makes no sense, you break it open. You get enough people with serious firepower and you either capture or kill every last one of them, I think I could survive Psycho, especially after the first scene with the dude, f that he's clearly deranged, and a shitload of money in my car like she had. However I would probably die in every scenario of the Saw movies. I'd survive Saw by not getting targeted by the Jigsaw killer because I'm a pretty chill guy. I think I could survive the nerve gas house except the needle trap half that. Suicide honestly seemed in the like the easiest way to go in a lot of those saw scenarios. Pretty much a lose-lose situation all around. It would really depend on which jigsaw wound up constructing your trap at the end of the day. John Kramer, your chances are, at least, decent if you follow his instructions and keep a cool head about you. John Kramer is notorious for having survivable games. Amanda Young, you're completely screwed. She's just a straight up killer. Mark Hoffman, he's more of a career killer, getting rid of those who he has a personal beef with. Exceptions do exist, but you have to be a pretty genuinely shitty person to be targeted in the first place. Fair warning, NSFW link. Also the guy in the driver's seat is the late Chester Bennington. Lawrence Scorden, probably the only one of Jigsaw's apprentices to actually uphold John Kramer's philosophy. Same advice for John Kramer applies here. Logan Nelson, Nelson is more of a revenge killer, so you should generally be safe as long as you haven't killed somebody. The Descent. Well those are some well prepared young ladies who look to be off spelunking. As I drive on by. Blink and you miss me. Yeah my policy is to never take up any hobbies they specifically ask you about in your life insurance application, so I'm definitely safe from any horror movie featuring spelunking. Also scuba, mountain climbing and hot air ballooning, 
just in case anyone ever decides to make a horror movie about any of those things. Um guy I remember watching this with my husband, I didn't know it was a horror movie. He just told me it was about some rock climbers getting trapped in a cave. Freaked me out when I saw a damn cave monster humanoid thing and was like WTF man, a stranger calls. I don't answer calls from numbers I don't know. Doesn't matter, the call is coming from inside the house. You not answering the phone doesn't make him unwilling to kill you. Any movie where the killer walks slower than a damn snail. Yeah. Probably taunt the killer too. Act like you are running fast, trying to outrun them, right before you get into the cab, get to the airport and leave the fucking continent, predator as long as I don't pick up a weapon it will leave me alone. Or just get pregnant. Would the Yanaja kill a disabled person? I'm just thinking of a scenario where my asthmatic ass is scrambling on the forest floor because I dropped my goddamn glasses. The predator would be standing nearby probs not even doing anything because my audio processing problems mean I can't even hear it. Predator, I'm sorry, but this would be too easy. Not really horror, but the mummy. I can't read hieroglyphics, so I look at the Book of the Dead, go neat book. And walk away, so the mummy would stay asleep, are you kidding? It's a book that's a genuine artifact with cool spooky stuff written inside and it's made of solid gold. I'd take that with me in a heartbeat. A part of me would want to keep it, but it would be ruthlessly obliterated by the part that wants to sell it. Still wouldn't be able to read it though, the mummy would be someone else's problem. Jaws. Stay on land, problem solved. Edit. Sharnado isn't a counterpoint. It's a different movie. Unless you can undeniably prove Sharnado and Jaws happen in the same universe at the same time I say to you, nah. Bitch never heard of Landshark, most slasher films, if you get stabbed, slashed in a non-fatal place just pretends to be dead, they never check. Blood loss, hold my beer, I would die almost instantly in a quiet place. Maybe happy death day though because only the main character dies most of the time. I'm not the main character. What do I care? I farted twice while reading this comment. Not only would I die in a quiet place, but I'd die the most embarrassing death possible, Halloween. I'm pretty sure I could outrun Michael Myers. Do I get to hear the music? That would increase my survival rate 100%. Sorry to break it to you but somehow you lit inexplicably trip over nothing multiple times just so that good ol' Mike can catch you while moving at a speed that would suggest he's taking his troll in a museum, any horror movie with a haunted house, just don't move into the house where tens of people died mysterious deaths, it's really that simple. But the price is super cheap and look at that view. We can fix this old place up and sell it for a profit. When you sold me this house. You forgot to mention one little thing, you didn't tell me it was built on an Indian burial ground, no, you didn't, well. That's not how I remember it. Hangs up, he says he mentioned it five or six times. Edit, the ones who should really be getting gold are, John Swartzwelder, John Vitti, George Meyer, Jeff Martin, Al Jean, Mike Rice, Jay Cogent and Wallace Wolodarski, whoops. Almost missed Sam Simon. Those were the days, the mist. Literally, because all you had to do, was bunker down and not go the fuck outside till the military showed up. Edit, this blew up quick. To answer the one thing people keep addressing, yes I do not know the military is gonna clean their mess up. However I am home almost all the time, that 10% chance I am outside at the time can be negated. But the book version? No no no. I would definitely be dead 100%, Bird Box. I stay inside all day. I think Bird Box would be difficult to survive in because of those assholes going around making people look. And maybe just one day slipping up, and that's it, one. For all you ring, cause I don't got a VCR, the third movie shows how the vid was digitized so we are all F on that one. Two. Jason does kill teens having us but he also kills you if you get in the way, or on his territory, or he failed to kill you last time. You ain't surviving shit. 3. Michael Myers, though slow, used the element of surprise for his victims. 
Lori and Loomis always survived because they knew he was coming. You're only going to survive if you're expecting him which makes him pretty easy. 4. Shaun of the Dead proved that zombies are easy to survive if you were lucky enough to not be your house's or apartment's ground zero and or the first victim. Get up high, lock the doors and wait for all this to blow over. 5. Hellraiser requires you to want the pleasure and pain the puzzle box gives you, you don't even need to be the one that opens it, if you didn't want it, but some Damas did but didn't want to for so he had you do it, Pinhead and the boys will come after that dude instead of you. Super simple, 6. Unrelated, no one is bringing up critters, body snatchers or any shit like that. I'm not going to say if they're easy to survive or not, just disappointed in your lack of diversity among horror. 7. The one movie that you 100% cannot survive is Final Destination. I would not survive any of these movies. If I was camping at a cute girl asked if I wanted to have say fun times, I would not hesitate and Jason would kill me. 8. Myers is a quiet walker and I don't always hear very good so I'm fucked. I like watching creepy videos, so I got 7 days on that one. When I see it puzzled, I try to solve it. When I see an old and creepy book, I read it. The only one that I might survive is zombie invasion because I have a borderline crippling phobia of them and I'm always making plans no matter where I am. Thank you for listening to my TED talk, but I must go now because my unwanted nerdiness is unwelcome elsewhere. Subscribe for the best Reddit stories.